the Paul Leslie Hour, helping people tell their stories. And now, your host, Paul Leslie. Hey, it's me. How are you, friend? I'm always honored to have you listening to the Paul Leslie Hour. If you would like to support the Paul Leslie Hour and the mission of the Paul Leslie Hour, which is bringing 16 years of interviews out into the light of day, as well as continued new interviews, just go to patreon.com slash the Paul Leslie Hour. Every little bit helps, believe me. This is the fifth installment in our Little Feet series. This is with the Little Feet guitarist Paul Barrere. A lot of you may know that Paul Barrere has passed away. He died at 71 years old, October 26, 2019. He was born July 3rd, 1948. Paul Barrer was the guitarist, one of the singers and songwriters with the band Little Feet. He also made some solo recordings, which are quite good. And he was a member of the duo Paul and Fred, with Fred Tackett of Little Feet. In this interview, he talked about his perspectives on the band Little Feet, as well as the album that had come out around that time, Join the Band, This was around 2008 that this interview was recorded and broadcast on the radio. I feel lucky to have been able to see Paul Barrer in concert several times. He was an incredible performer, and many would say one of the best guitarists ever. I'm also happy that I got a chance to meet Paul Barrer. I think you're going to see in this interview that he was a very down-to-earth person. Well, welcome to the program, Paul Barrer from Little Feet and also from the duo... Fred and Paul. Yeah, the little duet of Paul Barrera and Fred Tack, and we go out and, and do little gigs. As a matter of fact, we're going to do one down in New Orleans on May Day. So tell me, starting from the beginning, where were you born? I was born in uh, Los Angeles, basically raised in Hollywood, uh, which is where I met Lowell George. Um, he went to Hollywood High School as well, only he was like uh, three years ahead of me. He was in school with my older brother. I watched his career grow as I was still in high school would go see him play with the factory and then the mothers and then uh you know he started little feet and um he was a big fan of uh, the garage band that i had up in laurel canyon and he asked me to join little feet as the bass player and i i auditioned in 1969 as the bassist but uh not being a bass player i didn't make it but i told him if he ever needed another guitar player give me a shout and lo and behold two and a half years later he gave me a call and said uh you know what, I'm ready to expand the band. So that's how I got in, just before the Chicken. What kind of music did you listen to growing up? I had a pretty well-rounded education in music. My father was a big music fan. His father was a professional musician, and he was an actor. But we had everything from classical to Dixieland in the house. And so, you know, I kind of was indoctrinated originally with a lot of show tunes and a lot of Dixieland music and, and some classical music, but uh, my love came with uh, rock and roll. My older brothers, you know, were, were big into the rock and roll scene in the uh, mid-50s when it started to happen, and uh, so I got into Little Richard, Pat Domino, and Elvis, Jerry Lee Lewis, all those cats when I was about 10 years old, and uh, that's really where the, the love started from, and from there, I kind of got into the, uh, the folk blues scene. I, I was big on Mr. John Hurt, and, uh, and then eventually the John Lee Hooker a lot, and uh, kind of based my style on, on those two guys. Now you perform with, with a lot of artists that are really well known, like Bonnie Raitt, Robert Palmer, Carly Simon, Buffett, and, uh, and so on and so forth. Is there any musician in particular that really sticks out in your mind as just a memorable experience? Oh, well, they all are, are definitely memorable experiences. When I look back on this, this career that I've had, it's, it's, it's amazing to me. I, sometimes my kids will pull out the old photographs and they'll, they'll look at these pictures of us on stage with you know thousands and thousands of people out there, and I go, "Oh yeah, that's when we opened for the Who down in Anaheim Stadium," or "Oh no, that was the show we did with the Stones and Sidgard." You know, every now and then I kind of pinch, my, pinch myself and say, "Wow, I've got a pretty good, pretty good life." What do you think it is about Little Feet that makes it so different from other bands? I think just the mere fact that we were never pushing the, uh, an image scene. We were always pushing music. The one thing that Lowell always told us back in the, the days was the rule number one is that there are no rules. Whatever 
whatever musical genre you want to explore, please do so, and, and we will dive into it because uh, you know music is such a great and wide expanse that uh, you know to, to limit it to just one style is just I think you're, you're shortchanging yourself. So I think that's the thing that you know really stands out about Little Feet is it's been you know the uh, the blessing and the bane of our existence because you know a lot of record companies and so forth would always say, well, you're too diverse. It's how do we market you and this and that and the other thing and I think we were more involved in it for the enjoyment of the plane than we were for the actual monetary gains although money is not bad and the band Little Feet has probably some of the most talented players it's a true um, conglomeration of very talented players from so many different styles of music and, and for some reason it just all seems to work I kind of call it our musical gumbo we, we throw all these different styles in and comes out little feet. <laughs> Pretty bizarre. Is there anyone in the band that sticks out in your mind as a particularly close friend? Oh, they're all close friends. I mean, a band to be together for 30 some years, you truly, you know, are like a family. And like a family, there's the good and the bad and the ugly. And uh, we've had more, more of the good than we have the bad and the ugly. But there's been spots of turmoil and, and strife and, and everything else. And yet we, we managed to persevere from the because of the love of the music. Right now, Kenny Gradney and myself are, are very tight because we, we play a lot of golf together. And uh, back in uh, the early 70s, uh, mid-70s, Billy and I are very tight because we wrote a lot of songs together. Fred and I are very tight because we, you know, we go out and do our little duet things. Uh, and then Sam, you know, he's just, he's just a great friend, and as is Richie. It's almost like saying, which one of your children do you love most? <laughs> You just mentioned the duo, and on the website it says that you and Fred love to perform live, and it's kind of strange how that all started, but it doesn't say how, the story there. It started really because uh, when Little Feet would go on the road, we'd be asked by uh, radio stations, could we come down and play a couple of songs? Well, you can't take a whole band into a radio station studio. They're very small anyway, so usually Fred and I would go and play a couple of songs with acoustic instruments, mando, mandolin and uh, guitar or a couple of guitars and we did that uh, a few times and then we got invited to uh, perform a show at the, the NOM show for uh, for Gibson Guitars opening for John Lee Hooker. So Fred and I put together a little 45 minute set of music and, and went down and opened up for John Lee at the, the Anaheim Convention Center and that, that's kind of the way it started right after that we got uh, asked to come and tour Japan like one of those things that just kind of fell into our laps and uh, been enjoying it ever since. Different way to put spins on some you know, classic little piece of material. And what I tell people in the, the audiences, which are usually, you know, small coffee house type settings and so forth, is I, I get to tell them the inception of songs and, and how songs were written and so forth. And a lot of the songs were written basically on a, one acoustic guitar or a couple guys sitting around and playing and so you can you can put a more folksy kind of a bend, if you will, on the music, and it it lends more towards the lyric and the song than it does with the power of the rhythm section, which is kind of neat. Seems like Little Feet plays a lot of interesting places. You just mentioned Japan, and you know Little Feet plays New Orleans a lot, a lot of fun places. You know, I just caught the show that you all did in Athens, and I was wondering, is there any place that has really stuck out in your mind as a real memorable place? A lot of cities just I, I love to go to, not just, you know, for the plane of the music, but just for the vibe of the city. You know, Atlanta definitely sticks out. It, we've had great times in Atlanta, Georgia. New Orleans, of course, is a, is a fun place for us. Uh, in the more recent history of Little Feet, the Pacific Northwest has been great for us. Seattle, Portland, Eugene, that whole corridor up there. But there's, you know, the, I can remember doing shows uh, in Milan, Italy, in an old soccer arena. They did one recently in a in a church, Fred and I did, in a church in Woodstock, which is just unbelievable. It's freezing cold in there, but it was great. You never know what you're going to find when when you get a new gig on the on the uh, itinerary until so you get there. You just kind of go and, and dig it. And once you start playing, it's all the same. And there's a new Little Feet album, and it sounds very exciting to me. It's been a project a little more than two years in the making. We've got, uh, you know, an abundance of stars different musical genres joining us on, on different Little Feet songs and then on other songs that we've covered, which um, I think is just fantastic. We've got Bela Fleck and Sam Bush and uh, Emmylou Harris and, uh, and Gill and 
uh, Brooks and Dunn, Chris Robinson, Dave Matthews, Bob Seeger, and a lot of Jimmy Buffett. We did it in, in conjunction with Jimmy and his label, Mailboat Records. When someone goes to see one of your shows, whether you're playing with Little Feet or you're playing with Fred Tackett or whatever, what is it that you hope someone gets out of the show? Pure enjoyment. What I like to say about Little Feet music is it gets you good feeling, feeling good. If you can sit still during a Little Feet show, then you know you're close to dead, or you're you're probably just too stoned to realize what's going on. There's something about that rhythm that is infectious, and if, if it doesn't get you up and get you moving, making you feel good, well then we're not doing our job. I have one more question. This program goes out all over the world, so I would like to ask you what you would like to say to the world. I'd have to say. I think that, you know, music, it goes beyond politics and religions and everything else that, you know, seems to divide us. Maybe if more people just listen to more music <laughs> and less to the politicians and to their uh, local pastors, maybe we'd all get along a little better. Well, Paul, I do appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. It's My pleasure. Been a pleasure. Thank you so much. All right, brother. You take care. Bop, bop, dealy, bop, bop. Goodbye.